What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. It is Saturday, I'm just sitting here editing this video that you're watching. And I decided to amend it because something happened. Neural DSP released an update for the quad cortex. So I just figured in the sake of transparency and being honest, I would address it and say, yes, Neural DSP has released an update. They did add some new amplifiers and some new effects to the quad cortex. However, the majority of things that I talk about in this video still apply. They haven't changed. And there's still one big issue that I hope they address with the quad cortex in the future. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to share some thoughts and opinions on the Quad Cortex after owning one for a couple weeks now and messing around with it quite a bit. The Quad Cortex is an ultra powerful multi-effects unit that has amassed a considerable fan base as well as a considerable backlash to the initial buzz that surrounded the unit after its NAM debut in January of 2020. Now I'm sure the main question a lot of you have is, should I buy a Quad Cortex? And that depends. For some people, this is going to be the end all be all, but there are some that might feel extremely unsatisfied or deflated after reading all of the hype and deciding to jump in head first. Hopefully I can help you answer some of those questions for yourself with my criticisms. If you have ever read any of the development updates for the Quad Cortex on the Neural DSP site, I'd highly suggest it. There is some really great information in there and it's really interesting to hear about the development of this product directly from the CEO. In fact, when Neural DSP started, it seems like the whole goal was to build a piece of hardware that could live 10 to 20 years into the future and the plugins were just a way to create cash flow to fund the project. That is very ambitious to say the least. Let's start by breaking this down into different categories. First off, the build is possibly my favorite feature of the Quad Cortex. It has a full metal chassis, which houses a seven inch touchscreen. Inside the housing, there is a two gigahertz Shark Plus quad core processor, which I don't even really know what that means, but it sounds cool. Another killer design choice in my opinion, and something that is really forward thinking, is that the foot switches double as rotary knobs. So you can tell they put a lot of time and thought into how this product was gonna be used, and they wanted to make something clean and sleek, but could appeal to both your home studio desktop user, as well as your live touring act that needs to be able to program and switch patches and effects on the fly. Now, while the in and out options are not quite on par with something like the Axe FX, it still more than covers the needs of most users. And that leads me to the sounds. To my ears, everything that I am hearing lives up to the bar Neural DSP has set up with their existing plugin suites. However, it doesn't seem like there are as many effects as you would expect from a unit in this price range. For example, there are only four delay modes. Now. Neural DSP would tell you that there are actually eight if you count the mono version of each one of those delays, and that's where things get a little bit dicey. On the Neural DSP website, they claim that they have 50 plus amps and 70 plus effects, but they're counting those redundancies. For example, there are really only 13 amps, But when you count every channel and every switchable mode, you end up with 50 patches. And in my opinion, this is actually a misstep. I think a much better approach would have been to have each one of these amplifiers be its own thing with the different channels and modes living inside of each amplifier's parameter page. I think it's much cleaner, which matches the whole ethos of the Quad Cortex, and I personally really love it when I have the option to switch between modern and vintage modes on a dual rectifier without having to load up a new amp. They even tease that they can do this with models like the Freeman 100, where you can toggle the fat switch, the C45 switch, the voice and saturation switches, on or off on the amplifier's parameter page. From a design perspective, I find this much more attractive, and I really wish that they would have gone this route with the amp models, even at the expense of saying, well, we really only have 13 amp models right now. And in my opinion, that would have been quite a bit different and better than what the competitors are doing. Now there's a big caveat when it comes to this limitation of amp models inside the quad cortex, and it comes in the form of the capture feature. Neural DSP has loaded this thing up with captures, and I mean like a lot of captures. There are 356 different captures included, which cover a lot of ground that some users might be missing when they power up their unit for the first time and realize there's quite a lack of high gain amps traditionally found in multi-effects units in this price range. We'll come back to the capture feature here in just a minute. The next thing I wanna talk about is the user interface. It's one of the best, maybe actually the best in my opinion. While I think the menu system could use some modification and some refining, I absolutely love the touchscreen. It's so easy to build patches with, and I actually find it enjoyable instead of just being a hurdle between me and getting my tone. 
Everything feels incredibly intuitive from adding a new block to your chain to choosing the device all the way to the routing. It's probably the best out of any unit that I have ever used or reviewed, and I can tell a lot of time and care went into its development. And back to those rotary knobs. It is very convenient that you have 11 rotary knobs to control different parameters. Sometimes with a touch screen, you find yourself having a difficult time dialing in smaller increments, but with the rotary knobs, they made it much easier to get those fine tunings. Each rotary knob, or foot switch if you prefer, has an LED on top of it, which comes in handy since everything from the effects parameters to the blocks are color coded. This can really help you navigate them quickly and efficiently. Now let's move on to the capture feature. Now if you're thinking to yourself, What's the problem? It seems like everything you've said so far you've liked. Well, this is where things start to take a turn. But let me explain. The capture feature is a really cool option for people that want to capture a snapshot of a piece of gear or a rig that they might want to be able to access digitally with the quad cortex. For example, it's very useful if you have a vintage head that you don't want to take out of your gear dungeon, but you want the tone when you play live or when you go into the studio. It's incredibly convenient for that. Now the main competition for this type of hardware is of course the Kemper. But there's a big difference between the Quad Cortex and the Kemper Profiler, and that is the economy built around it. See, Neural DSP's idea is that users can go to their social media platform because on top of being a developer of plugins and guitar effects hardware, they also want to start a social media platform, apparently. This is an interesting idea, but I think it's more of a hassle than anything. I'd rather just be able to quickly export my captures and email them to my friends at my own discretion. So here are my final thoughts on the Quad Cortex. There are really four other main competitors in this space. You have the Helix, you have the Axe FX, you have the Kemper, and then lastly you have the Head Rush. If you are a huge fan of the Neural DSP plugins and the design philosophy, then this is probably going to check a lot of boxes for you. But don't expect all the rare and interesting amplifiers that you've come to know and love to be included with the Quad Cortex. Most of what is included in the Quad Cortex are the same amps and effects that you have seen and heard from other digital modelers. And that's really where my issue is with the Quad Cortex. They aren't doing anything new in the world of amp modeling and effects with these units. Compared to the Axe FX and the Helix, the Quad Cortex has far fewer options, especially when you compare it to the Axe FX and its incredibly deep parameter editing ability. Well, what about the touchscreen? While you could consider it an improvement over the Axe FX or the Helix, it's something that the Head Rush already has, so it's not necessarily new or innovative. Now, I will acknowledge that it has built-in Wi-Fi, which I think is a really forward-thinking move on Neural DSP's part, but there's really only one other thing that kind of makes it unique among all of its competitors, and that's the capture feature. Now, I'm not gonna lie, sonically, the capture feature is really incredible. And some people are already calling this the Kemper Killer because it can reproduce tones closer than the Kemper can. That's a tongue twister to say. While I think that's debatable, there is one thing that the Kemper does much better, at least it has to this point, and that is it has created an economy for users to create and sell their profiles. This lets people who would otherwise not have access to incredibly rare or valuable amplifiers to get access to those tones for a sliver of what the actual amplifier or rig would cost and that appeal leads more people to buy Kempers. With the Quad Cortex, the way that it looks like this will even be a possibility is to pay to have someone follow you back through the app so you can have access to their captures. Actually, while making this video, I bought a pack from a third-party vendor just to see how this process worked, and sure enough, I paid $15 for a friend request. I think that this is a big misstep by Neural DSP, and I really hope that they come up with a better marketplace or open it up to users to be able to distribute these captures freely. So in summary, the Quad Cortex is a breathtakingly beautiful piece of gear that does a lot of things that their competitors do, but doesn't really do anything better than their competitors do. Again, if you are a big fan of the Neural DSP products to this point, then the aesthetic is sure to please your sensibilities, but if you're a power user looking for the maximum amount of options or parameters to tweak, then you might feel disappointed. And lastly, if you are an audio engineer looking to make a side hustle selling captures off your priceless boutique amplifiers, well, don't sell your Kemper just yet. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.